I picked up immediately, you're not originally from Earth, okay? And that's probably why things feel a little weird right now. Like things that you thought were normal are no longer acceptable. This is what I've been, you know, conditioned to do throughout my life, but now I want something more. Or, my, or this doesn't seem like this is fitting in with my soul's purpose, that sort of thing. But with you in particular, I do see that you're... There was three waves of volunteers that came after World War II that came to assist with Earth's ascension process. But you're what I would call a second wave volunteer. You were born in 1980, so you're kind of like right in the center of, of what I would call second wave volunteer. So what that means is that you came in here as an indigo, so you're somebody that came in with a rebellious spirit in order to help break down these old systems, you know, that that are no longer working for us, okay? And I think maybe what's going on right now is you're looking at, you know, some of the things that you're doing in your life and you're like, you know, this isn't really, this was okay a few years ago, but it doesn't work for me anymore. So we'll take a look at that. I'm picking up kind of a dual star system of origin with you. I'm getting a lot of Lyran feline energies with you. Pretty much all of humanity started at, in Lyra. All of the humans throughout our galaxy and different star systems, whether you believe that there's extraterrestrials or not, I mean, we have family throughout the, I think it's pretty much well known now. We're not the only ones on this planet. Um, and we're not the only ones in the in the universe that are human. But pretty much all of humans started off at, at in Lyra, at least here in this particular galaxy, okay? So I'm seeing you have Lyran origins. So that tells me you're a very, very ancient soul, okay? You're somebody that has been going through this entire process for quite quite a long time, you know, the reincarnations, you know, process. Now, I would say the majority of your lives were spent off Earth, okay? So you spent most of your lives prior to this, you know, this Earth incarnation in other other places outside of Earth, okay? Now, are you somebody that is a highly spiritual person or kind of, so, are you kind of in, in getting kind of introduced to it or? Um, yeah, yeah quite the spiritual person yeah you are okay gotcha okay so um so let, let me kind of back up with lyra a little bit um lyra was a star system that was um when there was god there was god you know god decided to split itself off into these oversouls, okay? There was an oversoul group that was called the co-creators, and they were the ones that co-created um, the beginning of what we would call sentient races on, on Lyra. The very first race of beings that they created were these, uh, what we we'll call these feline beings, beings that were kind of human in shape, but they had feline features. So this was where your Lyran lion people came from, and then also your Lyran feline. You have a very feline-esque energy to you, and I'm thinking you're probably, in very first thing, Incarnation you had was probably as uh, as Lyran feline. Basically, just what that means is that you have certain qualities to your soul that are highly independent. Okay, that's one of the qualities. You're you're extremely flexible and versatile. So pretty much like the feline-esque qualities that you see even cats today have, you have a lot of those qualities. Okay, uh -huh. do you resonate a lot with cats? Yeah, <laughs> yeah. So you're a big cat lover or, yeah. So you have a kind of a feline-esque quality to you. So um, I'm just seeing somebody that has a very, very strong aspect to your soul. I see that you are an Aries, you know, so that would fit in with that very feline-esque quality to your soul that you, you're highly independent, you know, somebody that is very flexible, but then you're also somebody that has high integrity. Okay. You're not going to, you're always going to take the higher road okay if you if you do things that are not correct you get lessons right away it's kind of like you get like pushed back on the right path kind of thing so sometimes i think in your life even in this life when you feel like you're going down the wrong path you'll get smacked 
back into the right path, you know. So so I do see some of that going on with you. Now, these feline beings, they were very high vibrational beings. Some of them chose to evolve out of physicality. You are one of the ones that decided to stay in physicality. So in consequent lives, you incarnated as, I think, Lyran human. So they, they did develop human type races in Lyra as well. But then you also um, had incarnations outside of Lyra because Lyra became destroyed. There was a race of very malevolent beings that attacked Lyra. And then the few Lyrans that survived those attacks ended up escaping to other star systems. So you were one of the beings that managed to escape. And I'm trying to see where you ended up. Um, they're actually saying Cassiopeia. So you're one of my very first souls that had a, incarnations in Cassiopeia. When you escaped um, the wars in Lyra, there was quite a few starships that, that ended up going to different other constellations. Uh, there was some that ended up in Cygnus, which is the Swan constellation. It's the one that's located right next to, to Lyra. You ended up in Cassiopeia. Now, the Cassiopeians, um, I think what, what I'm seeing there is they didn't have any indigenous cultures that lived there. Um, the Cassiopeians essentially were uh, descendants of Lyran refugees, but they were more of the feline qualities, okay? So they were, these were the feline races of Lyra that ended up developing a, another culture in Cassiopeia. Cassiopeia was, was eventually set up to be a sanctuary space, okay? So it was uh, kind of like a no-fly zone, you know, so there was, there was just no wars that were allowed in the space. Uh, Cygnus was another one that was like that. So the Cassiopeians ended up becoming highly spiritually evolved because they didn't have to deal with all these wars and, and things that were going on. So I'm seeing that they had their own culture. They Their culture was very much feline in its orientation. So even though they looked human, they had some feline qualities to their face, facial features. And even now when I look at your face, I see very feline-esque. You have the high cheekbones and uh, and you know the beautiful eyes you know like kind of like a feline quality to your face so so you so you even throughout all these incarnations you've carried a very um, you carry the genetics from your original Lyra home now the Cassiopeians they were just involved with maintaining kind of a spiritual base and a place for people to go to to find refuge from other places that weren't quite so high vibrational. Now I'm seeing in consequent lives um, that you've had, I, I would say, a, a lot of incarnations in Cassiopeia. In some of your your other, you know, your lives, um, your, your later lives in Cassiopeia, you decided to join the Galactic Federation and you were starting to take and I'm seeing you were like a, um, you weren't a commander, but you were like somebody that was part of the, uh, the officer team. You know, you, you had a, you had a specific role, at, um, you were an officer, but you, you also, I think your role was with communications or something like that. So you were on board, um, these starships and you were visiting Andromeda quite a bit. Okay. It was like, you were part of that group that was constantly going on these space exploration trips to Andromeda. You, I think, always stayed in Cassiopeia, but then you started visiting Andromeda. So so you you've had you've had connections with with several folks that consequently made soul contracts with so you were doing work with some of these folks there was a whole bunch of you that decided um okay we're all gonna we're all gonna get called to do this earth project because um pretty much a lot of us that are here on earth at this time have some involvement or some connection with either the Ascended Masters or with the Galactic Federation. And you're part of the latter group where you came in through the Galactic Federation. What happened on Earth was that um, when World War II ensued and there was that big bombing of Hiroshima, the Galactic uh, Councils decided that there was, they couldn't have Earth blow itself up. They weren't going to have what happened on Maldek um, happen on Earth, okay? So... So they sent a whole bunch of us, 
here to incarnate on earth and that's why, why before i was talking about the ways of volunteers you came in through route of the galactic federation because you were you just you started to get involved with the galactic federation and that's what you did uh can i ask what you do for work today what is it that you do for a living or so a little bit of massage therapy and yoga teaching oh okay so you you already work in a very highly spiritual field okay body work is something that the cassiopeians were very gifted at they do a lot of um body work because they were very physical beings you know they were beings that were very i think um and comfortable in their physicality now i'm seeing you do a lot of the same things even though you're not maybe not quite aware of it or or maybe you are, but you're not, you know, it's not like you have to really think about it. You just know intuitively where to go in that person's body to work with them. And um, the same with the yoga. What you're doing is you're enabling people to find balance within their bodies. So I would say your role is probably um, very, very physical. Um, I don't see you just doing yoga and body work, though. I think... I see you. Your your soul is 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 looking for more of an expansion beyond that, and I think maybe that's why you're feeling some dissatisfaction in your your life right now with your job because you feel like okay, I I I I want you know I I, I enjoy doing this work, but at the same time. I, I need a new challenge, you know, so I need something where I could help people maybe even faster, or maybe I can, you know, expand, you know, my spiritual toolkit, that sort of thing. So a lot of that Cassiopeian high level spirituality is trying to manifest itself in your reality right now. So, so I see you moving beyond what you're doing. I think you're always going to do some level of body work. I think that's something I think you're going to always enjoy doing, but I see you expanding out of doing just body work, going more into sound healing. Funnily enough, I, I booked myself to have, um, to be someone's case study for gong um, healing last week. Oh, okay. Treatment, and she asked me if I was pregnant because it's a contraindication, and I said yes, so I couldn't really have the treatment. So what I'm seeing um, with you is I, I see you actually doing not gongs, but doing more crystal bowls. Getting to you, I, I do see you working more with sound healing and that you'll be utilized. And I, I see you working with crystal bowls and with tuning forks. Do you, okay. okay, so you might want to look into maybe getting some training in either one of those with crystal bowls, it's real easy. I mean, you can get training in it, but I think you can just get a crystal bowl and just start, you know, playing with it, and you know, or get several of them. And they're they're quite they're quite they're good size, and you get beautiful sounds from them. But they're very very deep, you know, beautiful sounds that will really I think get to the core of what's going on with that person. And you can actually buy crystal bowls that have like. Um, that are aligned with certain chakras, okay? So tuning forks that you can work with where it's not just a, you have your regular tuning forks, but then you have tuning forks that are aligned with planetary systems. So you can get into like having, you know, 12 different, you know, tuning forks that maybe there's one that's aligned to Venus or one that's aligned to, to the sun or one that's aligned to the moon or, you know, so... So you can work with healing people using these tuning forks and that you will have to go through some training because it can get quite complex. So that's, I don't know if that's, there's anything like that available in, in the UK, but I imagine there must be some training someplace that you can do. But the crystal bowls will be nice to start off with. And then maybe in the future, you might wanna look into moving more into the tuning forks. I do see a gift with you with um, helping. So you're, you're, you're kind of a healer, but you do it through, um, I think, opening up people's um, blockages or, or clearing those and helping them get a realigned. OK, so I think that's why you were attracted to the body work and why you were attracted to yoga, because these are modalities that are in place that where you could, you know, explore that aspect of yourself. Now, with Cassiopeia, um, 
these were beings that were highly evolved. Um, they, they had physical bodies, but they were very, very highly evolved and their bodies were more crystalline and base. So, so they had kind of a feline esque look to their features, but they had very crystalline based bodies. So I would say working with crystals for you is very beneficial because it, it's not, it not, it not only benefits your clients, but also it benefits you. Are you somebody that's very attracted to crystals or? And I haven't really worked with them for a while. I do love them. I would say maybe start, you know, maybe, you know, get uh, get some that you really resonate with and start working with them. Even when you're doing your body work with your clients, you know, start working with the crystals. And I think you'll start getting really in tune with, you know, what works best for, you know, for this person or what, is, what this other person needs. So I would say maybe even some um, crystal healing training might might help are you looking to kind of expand what you're doing is that what you're looking into or bit of direction i'm seeing more like the crystalline based healings so so crystal healing crystal bowls uh tuning forks sound healing um, those are areas I think you'll be um, extremely good at because you're 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 more of an energy shifter. You know I think is it has a gift for helping people unblock whatever it is that's blocking them and helping them to move past uh, the blockages to establish a new found you know level of health. So I do I do see that happening for you, um, and I I think you'll be very good at it, and I think it'll it'll take your business, your, your practice to the next level. I think right now, I think you're feeling like, okay, I'm doing this, I'm doing that, but it's, it's, you know, it can only take me so far. Um, I think adding in the sound healing and the crystal healing, uh, will, will kind of add, give you that added boost to your practice. Now I'm getting better results with my clients. And interestingly, um, one of my ex-partners many years ago, it must have been 15 years ago, mm -hmm. got me a, it was a star, and it's in the Cassiopeia constellation. Oh, interesting. Oh, wow. Yeah. Wow, that's really cool. So the Cassiopeia thing fits. Okay, gotcha. So let me check in on some Earth lives. I, w I wouldn't say you had hundreds of Earth lives, but you had a few. I'm seeing as part of your contract, you knew you had to spend some time on Earth because you were part of the Galactic Federation and pretty much all of us that were connected with the Galactic Federation knew that we we're going to be involved with the Earth project for a while. So your contract was, you were going to, it was going to be a multi-lifetime project. You knew that. You were okay with that, but you weren't you weren't okay with um, having hundreds of lives on Earth. So when you set your contract, I think they said 15 or less. But you, you had to get an understanding of what was happening with Earth people. So I'm seeing that you had incarnations in almost every single one of the major, the major continents in on the world. I'm seeing you had a Lemurian life, you had an Atlantean life, you had, you had a life definitely in Egypt. I mean, that was without saying. I mean, you definitely had a life. You probably had a couple of lives in Egypt. You had lives in Asia. You had lives pretty much everywhere. So you were just, I think, trying to expose yourself to, to different types of human um, conditions, you know, like different human cultures. So you've had Asian lives, you've had lives as Native American, you had lives in South America, I mean, pretty much across the board. And I don't often see this with readings, which I think kind of tells me a little bit about the Cassiopeian genetics. You know, uh, Cassiopeians, because they were so high vibrational, they could integrate themselves into almost any culture. I would see there's elements to your, your energy that I think you resonate a lot with the Eastern philosophies and religions, but then I think you also have an understanding of Native American spirituality. So there's, there's a very versatile aspect to your soul. Uh, I do see a life in India that was very, I think, um, significant for you. Yeah, you've had lives all across the board. It's kind of crazy. I don't, like I said, I don't, uh, usually I see people, they kind of concentrate like in Europe or they concentrate in Australia or, or Asia. 
with you, I kind of see you did everything. So in India, I'm seeing that was when you had your first, I think, exposure to the higher aspects of yoga, okay? And I'm seeing that you were kind of a yogi in that life and you were actually a man. You were utilizing yoga, not just for the aspect of doing yoga, for the, you know, the, the physical expression of it, but it was more for the spiritual expression. And you were interested even back then with um, helping people to utilize, to get their bodies in line to a higher vibrational state so that they can ascend, you know, so that they would have an easier time to evolve spiritually. Because when when your physical vehicle is stuck, then you, you can't really focus on your physic, your spirituality, because you're too busy dealing with the physical all the time. So this was, I think, this is part of your sole mission is to help people get their physical bodies in line. They're able to move forward. So they're, you know, their f- physical issues are no longer issues. Cats are, I, are, I, I love to be around cats because they teach us how to be in the moment. You know, they're just kind of like, and they're so agile and they just kind of do whatever it is they want to do. You know, they just kind of just like, okay, I want to jump here, here, and here. And they just do it. They don't worry about what what the outcome is going to be. They just go do it. They're just so, you know, they're just beautiful beings are able to live in the moment. And I see that's, a, that's an element with your soul, that your soul is able to just be able to live in that moment where you're just kind of like, Okay, this person has a blockage, and I see that's a that's an element with your soul that your soul is able to just be able to live in that moment where you're just kind of like, okay, this person has a blockage. We're gonna clear that blockage so that they can move forward and live, you know, be able to live a more joyful life, being comfortable in their own body forms, so then they can evolve into higher spirituality. It's kind of like, you know, when you take a look at Maslow's hierarchy of needs. You know, you, when you're dealing strictly with survival mode, which I think a lot of times when people are looking to have, like, say, b- body work done or or they're looking to, to get some sort of energy healing, it's usually because they feel st- there's at some level they still feel like they're dealing with root chakra issues, okay? You're helping them to move past the root chakra into higher levels of chakras so that once you remove the block, then they can move forward into a higher level state of being. So that's basically what your what your role is as as a soul. Um, you come in to do that for folks in your area. Uh, with Earth Lives, I, I do see um, you started off as Lemurian, which is actually a, a civilization that was in the Pacific Ocean, and that was a highly spiritual life. And that was also, um, they were very Polynesia-like in their culture. So these were people that were big healers and big into spirituality. So so it would make sense that you would start off, that you would start off that kind of incarnation, because I think that was setting the, the stage or setting the tone for all your consequent incarnations on Earth. I do see a life in Atlantis after that. Atlantis life, I think you were doing more um, technological work. It wasn't very fulfilling for you. You hated it. And then Atlantis fell, and I see that you are one of the few folks that managed to travel to um, Egypt because a lot of the Atlanteans ended up in Egypt, um, the ones that survived. I do see you've had... Um, several Egyptian lives. Um, I think you really resonated with the Egyptian culture. And most of the time you were some sort of priestess, uh, either of Sekhmet or, or Bastet. So again, there was that cat, the cat theme, you know, kind of moving in that door. You know, of course, you know, you're a cat being, so you would, you know, definitely move into cat-like cultures, especially the ones of uh, that worked with Bastet. A lot of what they did was they did sound healing baths. So they would heal people by putting them into these crystalline bathtubs with filled with water and they would utilize sound frequency that was the water was acting as a conductor and they would utilize these 
these frequencies to help heal people while they were in the water just taking a bath you know so so it was very ritualistic it was very much you know a, a healing thing that they did but they were doing this in as in order to heal people that's why i keep seeing this theme of sound healing for you because this is work that you've done before in your past lives and you were very good at it now i think they did do some some other types of healing modalities as well but that was one of the things they did was the sound healing baths you had several incarnations in egypt from there i'm seeing an incarnation in greece and then one in turkey and then one in India and actually Turkey maybe that's kind of a loose uh, I'm seeing more Indo Asia and in India that was another significant life for you that was one where I think you learned a lot and how to, uh, to help people get from this level to this level in their you know it's physical healing but also in their spiritual evolution from the india life i'm seeing a couple of lifetimes in southeast asia in one life you were an acupuncturist so you were learning again to work with meridian systems um this was a I think a life in china and you kind of had incarnations as man as woman as man as woman so you you kind of flip-flopped with with genders a little bit in the asian life i'm seeing you were like this elderly Chinese doctor and you were utilizing acupuncture to help heal people. So again, you had this kind of inherent understanding of meridian systems and how they work. Then I'm seeing a life in um, Thailand, interestingly enough. And in that lifetime, you were a dancer. Okay, so you were really expressing yourself through your body. So you're one of the royal Thai dancers. And it wasn't it wasn't like a sex thing. It was purely for the, I guess the, uh, there was a kind of like a physical expression, but then there was also a spiritual expression of dance that these, these dancers were doing. And you were one of the ones that were dressed up in the elaborate headdresses and, and, and outfits. Did you do any dancing in this life at all? Did, were you ever involved with dancing or um, trained in that, got trained in it? Because you have a very dancer-like, your your posture is very, very good. So I was just kind of wondering, not, not really. Not so much. I mean, there's a, when I was younger, I used to like going to clubs, not to get drunk, but to go and dance and just to kind of move in my body. And I tried a little bit of belly dancing at one time, but never stuck to it. Because I do see um, also this element of movement. And that was based off of your Lyra, your Lyra origins, where, you know, you were this feline being, so you were all constantly moving. I think if you feel like you're stuck, you know, where you can't move, it's just very hard for you. you you're somebody that likes to be able to to move around because there was another life I'm seeing in Russia where you were a ballet dancer. So, uh, so I was kind of wondering if that kind of carried over, but I guess it didn't, um, except maybe at the clubs. <laughs> and then I'm seeing, um, one native American life in, in, in the United States area. And, um, I do see South American as well. So I think South American came first. You were working as some sort of healer in, I think the Inca culture. So this would be South America, not, not Central America. And that was an interesting life. And then, so that life you were male in the native American life, I'm seeing you were female. And you were a medicine woman in that life as well. So you kind of have like this healer aspect, you know, kind of a healer, you know, healer aspect to a lot of your lives, but always involving working with energy or some sort of movement. And then um, I do see a lot, the, the last life you had before this one was also was back in England. I think this was in the 1800s. And I'm seeing in that life, you were... Okay, they're saying you were female in that life. I think you were working as a nurse of some sort. Um, so that's kind of interesting. That was the last life you had before this one. I think in this one, you decided to stay in, in the UK because I, I think just, you know, comfortable for you to do that um, because you're familiar with the area. I don't see like a bunch of European lives for you. I do, you know, you had the one life in Greece there I'm seeing you were a priestess of the uh, Temple of Delphi. Okay, so you were one of those. You're one of the again the very first person I've seen that had that 
kind of incarnation. Other than Greece, I don't see any other European incarnations except for the one in the UK. So, so you kind of like you, you're spread across the board with you have a, a very multicultural aspect to your your soul. I think you're somebody that's very versatile. You can you you can draw from many different experiences. Okay. So, what does that have to do with your life today? Well. Um, we did talk a little bit about your soul's mission. You know, you're here to help people unblock their physical limitations and move beyond it so that they can evolve spiritually. And that's a big job. I mean, it's a it's a beautiful work, but it's a big job. I see you initially doing this more one-on-one -on -one with clients, but then I also see you starting to have... Um, and I'm not sure if this is something you're interested in, but starting to teach others how to do this kind of work. So I do see you stepping more into a teacher role at some point. And I see you actually maybe even developing um, sound healing DVDs or, or CDs where people can listen to these CDs when they're not working directly with you. So I do see you kind of expanding your, your current repertoire, you know, going to next level, then the next level, and then the next level. But I do always see you kind of working with clients. You know, I do see that. I think you enjoy working with clients. And I think you'll be moving on, you know, beyond that to, to teach others how to also work with clients. You know, well, well, without a doubt, the baby's a star seed, So we know that. <laughs> so I'm going to check in to see where she's coming from. Um, yeah, they say Cassiopeia. So she's another, another, another one. I don't know why I keep saying she. Is it, is it a she or am I just making that up? I don't know. I... Not yet. I've got the first scan in two weeks. I had a tarot reading with um, a lady in 2005. And she said I was going to have a boy and he was going to do amazing things for Earth. And I just... So, oh, that's really interesting. Well, I think uh, whether it be a boy or a girl, it's definitely a star seed, and it's definitely a being from Cassiopeia. So, and like I said, Cassiopeians are rare on Earth. So, for some, for a, a, a soul from Cassiopeia to choose to do to come to Earth, they're coming in to do very big work. So, it's it's not going to be you know some somebody that's going to hold light or hold energy. This is going to be somebody that's going to be doing massively big work. Uh, he or she is going to do a lot of the work that you're doing they're they're going to move beyond it okay so they're going to be uh actually speaking to in public you know to other people you know about you know raising their vibrations and things like that so this is somebody's um i think you're going to be working more on like a ground roots level but your child's going to take the work that you're doing and is going to move beyond that so they're going to take it more to the you know the masses so I'm seeing kind of a big spiritual teacher. So you're kind of, uh, and the reason why I think they chose you is because you're not only because you're from the same star system, but also because you're helping them to to get the groundwork that they'll need to move on. So um, congratulations, by the way, on your pregnancy. That's a that's exciting. <laughs> I bet you're very excited about it. Now this child will come in heavily protected. Okay, so. There will be angelic forces and other beings that will be protecting you and the child. I'm seeing possibly maybe some injuries with the head. So you want to, like I said, keep this child protected. He or she will be okay. So there's no worries. I mean, it's just to be, you know, be kind of diligent about making sure that your child doesn't hurt itself, like say on on the playground someplace, you know, or getting too crazy. Cause like I said, Cassiopeians love to be active. They just love to be in the moment, you know, moving around. So um, what's the due date for your, your child? Is it in October or? Yeah, I think the 25th maybe. Okay, so Scorpio. Yeah, 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 they're, yeah, they're gonna be hard headed. <laughs> yeah, so. <laughs> So, so yeah, just keep, yeah, keep, keep them, keep them in line and they'll be okay. But yeah, the, yeah, your child's going to be hard headed for sure. It's gonna be, <laughs> you got to keep them, you know, uh, focused and, 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 uh, contained you know doing some more constructive activities so yeah and I, I think you'll have enough for them to do with you know the work that you're doing you know they can help you with some of the things that you'll be getting into and I think they'll 
you know, uh, I, I see your child picking up on a lot of it very fast because they're they're coming in as a high, very high vibrational being. So you, yeah, you definitely have a lot to look forward to. Um, it's going to be a lot of fun. Your guides are all these uh, Cassiopeian cat people. <laughs> Um, mixed in with some angels, okay? So you have some angelic guides as well. The angelic guides I see for you is Archangel Raphael, Archangel Haniel. So Haniel is the uh, Archangel that deals with, I think, transformation. So, but definitely Raphael is is your major Archangel. I don't see so much of a connection with Ascended Masters. I think the Cassiopeians are their own Ascended Masters. So... I do see mainly Cassiopeians and angels. So if you're trying to connect with your guides, those are the two that I would say are the the most prevalent for you. I do see future timelines um, for you. I see you're going to continue, I think, growing and evolving with the work that you're doing. You're going to be expanding um, out in this timeline. I don't see this as being your only child. I think you'll have another one after this. So I do see that you'll have two children, more than likely. More than likely, I I do see you doing some traveling, but I think home base will always be the UK. So I do think that you will move on to, um, I see you maybe doing some retreats where you might get invited to do a retreat in another country. And, you know, it might be the United States. It might be maybe another part of the world, but I, I do see you taking what you're doing and, you know, kind of, um, spreading the message out to other places, a retreat, like a spiritual retreat of some sort. Okay. So, so that's where the traveling is going to come in. As far as after this life, um, I do see you, I don't see you staying on, um, I think you might have one more incarnation on earth. It'll be fifth dimensional earth. Um, but then I see you returning to Cassiopeia because your contract here will be finished. I see you having more involvement, actually, and in, you might even have incarnations, future incarnations in Andromeda. I see you kind of move in more towards an Andromedan expression, because I see elements of Andromeda already in your auric field. I don't see that you've had incarn- past incarnations in Andromeda, but I do see possible future incarnations there. So I think you might have one more incarnation on Earth, but it'll be fifth dimensional Earth, not third dimensional Earth. Then you're going to be moving on to back to Cassiopeia from there. And then from Cassiopeia, you're going to be moving on to Andromeda. So that's going to be your evolution. And thank you so much for booking a session with me. And I'm glad we got, I'm glad everything worked out. And I wish you a lot of love and success on your journey. Mm-hmm.